Uh, we can go ahead and get started, Fallon. Okay. Let's do it. So welcome, uh, welcome everyone to Talks with King J, um, Instagram Live. Uh, this is our third week of hosting King Talk. Uh, I'm sorry, Talks with King J. And basically, um, what we do is we have conversations about real issues, uh, real topics, and I sort of share in and sort of weigh in uh, some of my insights, some of my perspective and point of view, uh, and sometimes often my opinion. And some of it's scripture-based, some of it's principle-based, and then some of it's just, you know, my response. And so, but anyway, we're going to get started tonight. I'm happy to have the awesome, amazing Queen Fallon uh, on with us tonight as we discuss the benefits of waiting. So welcome, Fallon. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Awesome, awesome. So thank you uh, for joining in on the live. So Fallon, why don't you um, go ahead and um, kind of tell, let the um, the viewers know yes. uh, who you are and kind of also share a little bit about your story. Absolutely. So my name is Fallon Bonner, and I'm the founder of the Slave Ministry, as you, if you don't already know. <laughs> and we are a wholeness hub for women. So we, we provide tools and resources to help women become healthy, whole, and married. Um, and just a little bit about my story. So I was married um, to an amazing guy. And back in um, September of 26, he passed in a car accident. But prior to him transitioning, my husband and I used to minister together. We had like this little blog called um, Sex Day in the Relationships. And so I pretty much kind of took that and rebranded it rebranded it as the slave ministry. And so here we are. Awesome, awesome. And so um, how, how long were you guys married? Um, almost four years. Almost four years, okay. And so uh, since his passing, you started this slave ministry mm -hmm. where you're encouraging and, and empowering women. And talk a, a little bit about what are you empowering these women on, Fallon? Yes, yeah, so... We, um, so healthy, like keeping your body, you know, in shape, like y'all want to snatch your waistline, come on through, the slate ministry is for you. So we, we have like an online fitness um, club where ladies can come in and kind of get in shape. Um, so that's the healthy piece. And then the wholeness piece is to help them cultivate their relationship with God. So kind of really get that personal one-on-one -on -one relationship, not the whole religious stuff, but how to learn how to discern and hear his voice and things like that. And then, of course, to push through and get that ring, get a little hardware on your finger, girl. Because I know many, many of my ladies that are a part of the ministry are waiting and they're desiring to be married. So we give them the tools to become married as well. Awesome, awesome. I like that. Now, let me. I have to ask you this question: Are there any yes. men that are part of the slave ministry? No. Do, or do, oh, no. Okay, do, do, do you guys welcome men no. in the slave ministry? No. No men are welcome. No. Well, okay. Now I have to challenge you on that, right? Because if the goal is to get these women married and to kind of get them, as you say, the hardware, <laughs> uh, wouldn't it wouldn't it be appropriate? And I have to listen. I have to throw I have to throw my therapy hat on. Yeah, so ahead. wouldn't it be appropriate to sort of at some point? Um, and I, and this is just me asking you. Mm -hmm. Do you think at some point, you know, men? I I don't necessarily mean that they have to be a part of the slave ministry, yeah. but kind of have them join in and kind of share some of the insight. Because I feel yeah. like this, Fallon, I feel like in the culture and in the world that we live in, mm -hmm. oftentimes women are learning about men from other women. Lord Jesus. Okay. And, 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 I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm not saying that's, that's, great. that's yeah. I'm not saying that's a fact, but right. often because, you know, well, when you look at magazines, when you look at <laughs> mass media, mm -hmm. when you look at the talk shows, Five ways how to get a man. Five ways how to get over a breakup. Five ways how to do this. Three days, you know, three ways how to do this. Oftentimes, there's really no real discussion or interaction or conversation or dialogue about men and women and just on how men, you know, say sort yeah. of what, what makes a man choose a woman. You know yeah, what I mean? Just absolutely. things like that. Yes, absolutely. So we do have, like, we invite you guys in occasionally. So we have what's called From His Perspective which is okay. where we do like the one-on-one -on -one interviews and we kind of figure out like what exactly are you guys looking for while you wait um, on your journey to, to find a wife. But the main thing that I focus on with the ladies is showing them how to get in position because it's not their job to seek. It's not their job. You know, the Bible says he who finds. So I show them how to just get in position. Posi getting in position is just all about really working on yourself. 
So yeah. we're not really checking for guys. We're not really, you know, they're not doing any of that. They're just focusing on being themselves. But we do have those, those, you know, opportunities where the guys can come in and we do those amazing interviews just to kind of get a little insight. We also have an annual um, Valentine's Day um, event where I do an all-male panel of single, safe, success, successful, and celibate guys to show these women that these guys really do exist and they're not unicorns they're out there and they're praying they're on their face believing god for them just like they're believing for their husbands so right. those are the two times that we invite guys in so so basically Fallon, what you have done is you have basically created a coalition to where you're uh almost if if i could reference this you're almost a modern day naomi if that's <laughs> the correct yeah i guess i guess you could say that well, because well, well, because to understand the dynamic of the relationship of Naomi and Ruth, mm -hmm. right, and Ruth it's right. also what well, well, was it's also to understand and the uh, the essence of real story was how this woman who lost her husband mm -hmm. and she lost her son, mm -hmm. but at the same time she was willing to give her herself to allow Ruth to get in to get into position. Yeah. so much be found but to, to into position so she can be stabilized uh within her emotions and if, if that's if, if that's correct is that sort yeah. of well it's a little deeper than that for me so because um you know it was tragic you know i wasn't expecting him to pass he just left one day never came back home kind of thing i really began to see god i was like okay if you didn't allow my son and i to be in that car then there must be something you have left for me to do so I really, it became like, it was, it became purpose. God, why am I here? Why are we still here? Like, what do you want me to do? And God made it so clear. Like, I'm talking about his accident was in September, November. God just started speaking to me. He just kept saying, go on Facebook Live, go on Facebook Live. And at the time, you know, things were so foggy. I didn't really understand if that was God, if it was the enemy, if it was me. I didn't know. But, um, you know, God will just kind of keep, keep speaking to you in your spirit when it's him. And so I kept feeling it in my spirit. And I finally, I just said, Go on Facebook Live and do what? Like, I had hit rock bottom. I was at the lowest of lows. I'm like, go on Facebook Live and do what? And he said, share your love story. So I went on Facebook Live. I shared how we met. We had, like, over 10,000 people watching in, like, 24 hours. And the slave ministry was basically born from that video. So it, it became more so me fulfilling my assignment. I knew that my husband was very – he was operating his purpose. And I was like, Nick left here, and he, his, his work was done. So I was like, you know, when I leave, when I transition, I want to complete, because the Bible, I forget what scripture it is, but it's talk about how to complete down to the final detail, that thing that he's called you to do. And so that, you know, my life, I had a whole new set of lens on life at that point. And so it really was like purpose. So God really kind of just charged me with the mission to reach back and show these women that you don't have to open your legs to have sex. You don't have to give, you know, all of yourself, like, you are the prize and all you have to do is get in position and god is so strategic he know how to get behind the scenes make all the magic happen to bring your husband to you and a lot of the women were just broken from failed relationships you know things like that so it's just me really operating in my assignment and right. it's all holy spirit led and just kind of coming from that standpoint so just a little bit deeper than just me wanting to just nurture women but just wanting to fulfill my purpose and why right well right and absolutely and that and that's awesome because part of it right because you you had to go through a grieving process, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's only it's only natural, right? That you lost yeah. you lost your husband unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. What was that grieving process like for you? Oh God. Um. So okay, it's funny because the grieving process was it was horrible. I did not get counseling right away. You know, I tried to just kind of like go in a shell, deal with it on my own. Of course, that all came to a head, and I share with you, you know, but. I started getting professional counseling this year and it had been, it has been a game changer. But the beautiful thing about it is and how God worked because he's full circle. So as he was leading me to go and pour into these women, he was healing me in the process. So it was full circle. So it was like, and I just heard the Holy Spirit speak to me one day and he said, in order to keep going, you have to keep pouring. And so I realized that me pouring out was keeping me, it was basically keeping me moving forward. Right. Right. And that's, and that's awesome. And, and I think so many times, if for uh, the viewers and, and those that are watching, um, as you listen to Fallon said that, you know, she she went and got professional counseling and it was a game changer. Yeah. The reason I say that's a game changer uh, just in life, whether you are grieving, whether you're going through um, you lost a job or 
you was at this place in life and, and, and you had this expectation that you would be able to maintain that. Oftentimes what we don't acknowledge is that having somebody, uh, uh, not so much to have a sounding board, but having somebody to direct our emotions and our feelings. That's true. Because many times, you know, we, we, we have all these emotions and have all these feelings and they don't have a direction. Right. And when, when in our emotions and feelings don't have a direction, often abuse is inevitable meaning that we will abuse either something or someone around us. It does not mean that we're doing it consciously. Mm -hmm. uh, it, can, it can be unconscious that, that, that we're doing that. And so I, I truly admire that, uh, that you, you know, went to counseling and, and, and you were able to get healing on a deeper level because yes. I think what, God, what, what it sounds like what God was doing was that he was healing your heart spiritually and then he allowed the counseling to come in and to heal your emotions and oftentimes we and oftentimes we forget that the, the way we work is that we're mind body and spirit mm -hmm. and we're three entities and that all each entity has to be catered to it has to be uh a, a really shaping and molding into yes. these places especially if, if you've been hurt and mm -hmm. that's why i really admire the work that you're doing with women i know as a therapist Many times that people come in, male or female, mm -hmm. oftentimes what we are dealing with are issues and experiences and relationships that are long that, that are long gone. Yeah, yeah, that's true. There, there, there are things that so far in the rearview mirror, but we, we can't move past them mm -hmm. because we, we're, we're in prison. Right. Because it's, and, and many times that's the enemy's job. He's mm -hmm. an accuser of the He's an accuser of the brethren. Right. So the only way I can really impede on your progress is I have to keep remembering you on what happened. Right. Who did right. it and who said it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think what you, uh, to go back to what you said, how important is it for women to heal before entering into a relationship emotionally? Oh God, it's, it's very important because you'll take all that baggage you know, and all of the things and all the disappointments and you'll kind of just dump that into the next relationship it is it is everything like i had to take a time you know when i was in my season of singleness i had to take time to just really and truly get before god and ask him you know and i tell my ladies you know we do this thing where you kind of look in the mirror like you take a look in the mirror and i said god show me show me me like you know like show me show me the things that i need to change because you know i was like i got it going on you know i mean we all had those moments where we feel like we we have arrived and we don't need to change. And man, God started dealing with me once. So, well, you need to change your attitude. You need to do this. You need to do that. And I'm like, who me? You know. And so, I I knew that I was blocking, um, you know, my husband coming because it's kind of like this. If you're believing for God's best, God can't send you His best if you're not His best. You know. So I had to take that time to really work on a lot of that stuff, like how I was raised by a single mom. And so, you know, I watched my mom. Um, to handle her men, like, you know, check them, talk, you know, and so I had to kind of unlearn some of that stuff and learn how to be submissive. And I know we submit one to another, but I had to learn how to allow my husband to lead and truly and truly do that. So that was the work that I had to do prior to us meeting. Right. And let's park, let's, let's, let's park there when you talk about submissive, right? And because submission is often like considered as like, oh my gosh, you know, that word gets taken out of context so many times. Whether you're talking about relationships, you're talking about marriage, it's always like submission is this bad word. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever I'm menacing or even uh, to young women or to young girls, I often tell them, I said, submission is really just giving up your will. That's, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I said, because there's so many elements to that word submission. You give up your will, and also it's, it's, it's a sacrifice as well. And submission always is catered to letting go of something that you want to control. Right. That's, That's really true. what submission is. That's true. Yeah. But on the other side of submission, if you understand it from God's perspective, submission is another form of protection. Hmm. Because if you submit to his will, you're protected. Amen. It goes back That's to good. Psalms 91. Okay. If you're under yeah. the shadow of the Almighty, you're protected. That's true. By, you know, so to understand what submission is, is to give of that very thing that you want to have control. And we all want control, yeah. whether it's our own life or even in relationships. So mm -hmm. to the ladies that are listening, is that what Fallon is really saying is that she had to learn how to submit to God first. Yes. Then she could submit to a man. 
But on the other end of that, ladies, is that you cannot submit to a man that has not submit to God. Because on, if he, if he won't on. sacrifice himself to God, he won't sacrifice for you. No. That's the whole Bible truth, okay? That is the whole. So, it, you know. Yes. And, 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 and so, um, you, you, you talked a little bit about something that, that you were saying. You, you, you're saying a lot of good stuff that just kind of got, got my head just kind of going. Um, you, you, you talked a lot about waiting, right, for your husband to find you. Uh, oftentimes, it, I mean, and we kind of talked about this yesterday, is that uh, to really understand what waiting is, is we, you know, we make wait sound so bad because yes. we, we're, we're, we're human, we're impatient. Yep. You know, I, I'm sure there's a lot of ladies who come to you who want to be snatched and, you know, uh, uh, I, I don't know, you know, may, may, maybe they are dinner and they want to be a snack and it doesn't happen <laughs> overnight. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. Right. It doesn't, and so, it doesn't. because we, we, you know, we're, 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 we're pulled in. Microwave. You know, right. This is a microwave society. Right. Yeah. So everybody's like, Hey Fallon, I want your waistline tomorrow. And it's like, you know, you like, girl, I've been on this way for about six months. And so yeah. to, to get that understanding is that, it's a process. It's no different. Like, I have a client who will come in, and they'll just unload. They'll just dump everything. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, hey, Jay, make me better. And I'm like, I, I, I said, I can't. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, we have to comb through everything. Because in therapy, if you dump out two pounds of stuff, guess what? We got to pick through each thing that added up to two pounds. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh goes back to it's a patient because it's a process yes talk about the process of waiting what does that looks like okay so waiting look like you just taking the time to truly seek god and i know that sounds so cliche like well you know what what exactly does that mean it really truly means that you need to find comfort in him you need to make he he has to be enough you know you have to like it, it, it looks like you getting in the word and seeing what God has to say about you. Like God, mm, you know, looking yes, at Proverbs yes. 31, like that's, I begin to see my identity in Christ. So it's like, yes. once you build yourself up in the word, he can't, nobody can't come over here talking crazy sideways, trying to slide in. No, bro. Like I know who I am. I know who God is calling me. And you have a different confidence. It's not cocky, you know, but it's the confidence that can only come from Christ. So right, I spent right, that yes. time building up because guys would, you know, approach me and lead with my body and things like that. I'm like, there's more to me than just that. So I had to kind of see what God had to say about me so that I can just kind of get built up. Because it's like, at, at a certain point, maybe your self-esteem may be low. Because some women, they come to me with all different things. And so I have to tell them, you need to get in the word. Like, put your face in that word and just allow God. I tell them all the time, ask God to speak to you. He's always talking, right? It's just a matter if we're listening. So that's the first piece is really kind of getting that alignment. You know what I mean? Getting that alignment right and just saying, okay, this is who God has called me to be. And honestly, when I started doing that, I started attracting a different kind of guy. Like, I stopped getting the little a shout you know, kind of thing to, you know, hello, Mitch, you know, how are you? I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just different. You attract a different kind of energy once you just know who you are. Like, you can't come over here talking crazy to me. Like, you just can't. And honestly, it's sexy. That's sexy to guys when you have that confidence, like, <laughs> you oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I tell my and so, ladies and, all and, the time, and like, it's visible, and, and it, we're, like we can see it. Yeah. Like I, I can, I, I can see, I can tell when a woman has done the work. Like That's I can good. tell, like I yeah. can, I can tell because I've done the work and I'm continuing, con continuing to do the work. Right. You know what I mean? So I can always say, like, man, that sis, you could tell she's done. The self work, she has right. the self awareness, and then too, uh, yeah. This what this what the point was that you said is when you said you have to look in the mirror. I can tell when someone has taken the time to look in the mirror. Oftentimes, is that we walk away from the mirror because of what we're afraid to face. That's and good. I want the listeners to understand: you gotta face it. You gotta face the yes. ugly parts of you. Yes. You gotta face the insecurities. We all yes. have them. Because if you don't face them, they get exposed in the relationship. It yes. gets exposed in the workplace. That's it true. gets exposed on social media. Y'all need to be getting this man an offering. Get, go ahead and pass the offering. <laughs> so, 
it 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 it, it, yes. it, it get it get exposed in these different places when you begin to inter interact and engage. And guess what? When a guy who hasn't done the work run up on a sister like you who has done the work, his insecurities they come alive. Wow. Because what happened? Because I can't do what I normally do to move you. Definitely. So what happened is now my ego is in the way. Woo. And I can't accept and appreciate for you uh, appreciate you for who you are and for the right. work that you've done. That's why it's beautiful when, and you're right, fit to win. I say this a lot. You cannot change what you don't confront. Mm -hmm. You it won't change it if you don't confront it. That's and so right. it's 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 it, it's so critical to get in the mirror and look at the ugly parts because we're we're in a society where um and you're a beautiful attractive woman and mm -hmm. you know it we, we, we're in a society where everything is so superficial yeah and i often tell even the young people i minister to i said listen before you get caught up in someone's personality do some inventory on their issues Mm. Find out who these people are behind the personality that's good. that they're presenting to you because we're in a world of representatives. <laughs> yes, I, I, want you, I, I want you, I want you to receive me how I want you, you know what I'm saying? I want you to yeah. receive me based off of what I put on social media. And to get to know you behind closed doors, meaning that no, I gotta find out who are you really. Right. Because right. you want to be able to tell. If somebody have or they haven't done the work in certain Absolutely. conversations. Yes. Actually, you can tell pretty, like, the first five minutes, you know, depending yeah. on what you're talking about, you can kind of tell. If I may, I want to go back a little bit to the weight uh, because I wanted to talk about, too, setting your standards and having them set. And I think a lot of times what happens is women will have their standards, and when a guy come along, they'll relax them. And what they don't realize is that's very unattractive to me it's like me what you say is what you mean you know oh, what i yeah, mean absolutely, so, absolutely. like if you say i'm not having sex and i'm abstaining right now then you gotta hang you gotta stick you gotta stick with that thing you gotta stick to your guns so, yeah so that's what waiting look like as well it's just really setting your standards and sticking with it no matter what right. and i say this all the time my slager they know I, i'll say i don't care how fine he is how much money he make if he does not check off on your non-negotiables which are just those four or five, those top things that, you know, I'm not willing to bend on. Like, these are my must-haves. So once you get those set in place, it's easy to decipher between who's the one, who needs to be there and who needs to just keep passing through. Right. So let, so, so let me ask you this, Fallon. Like, what has it been like? Because I know you live in the A, and I, I used to live there. What, 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 what has it been like when you tell guys kind of like, these are my standards, and they're 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 non negotiable. Uh, right. It's you know there's there, there's no compromise in the situation. I know you yeah. see the hair. I know um um I, I know you see the body and everything like this. But this is what it is. Yeah. Um. So it looked like this. <laughs> um. Lies. You know. Some guys. Some guys are just flat out lie. Right. Like I've had married guys. You know, take me on a date and all this stuff, and they were just they were married. Like they sit under the same teaching, go to the same church. You know, I mean, the ladies who follow me know. Like I've I've given those stories, so it, it looked like that. I've also had some guys that, um, I mean, you know, they just they'll say, oh, I I can I think I can try that. Like I had one guy that you know my non negotiables. You know, before I met my husband, were like you had to be saved, and we call it saved for real. Like you're not just playing with this thing, but you're really bearing that fruit. Um, and that you, you know, didn't drink, didn't smoke, and that you were practicing um, celibacy. That was very important to me. And so I had a guy, you know, and I didn't tell him what my non-negotiables were, but I just kind of was like talking to him in just casual conversation. I'm like, oh, so, you know, are you, you know, are you having sex? Do, do you believe in celibacy? Are you practicing celibacy? And he was like, oh, I think that's cool. I'll try that out. And typically women will be like, well, I'm being too deep. Like he, so all the other things check off and he's willing to try it out. Listen. If a guy is willing to try, that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to pull you right back into that lifestyle. And, I mean, it's going to happen because the, fire, the Bible talk about you cannot put fire in your bosom and expect not to get burned. Like, you're going to get burned by playing with that fire. So, it's, it's you it's, you got to just stick with it. So, I definitely have guys that just, they'll try and to really, get you to bend and relax that. Oh, yeah. And and, and, and to be perfectly honest, and, and I will say this, and, and, I, and I'll be transparent and, and being a man, like, that's 
like it's it's, it's not a negotiable you know what I'm saying, or something that, you know, you feel like, well, I tell guys, like, it's not hard for me to operate in that realm. Because the one thing that you understand when you're a man of purpose, sex is not really satisfying. And I'm just being honest. When, well, once you, once you, that's good. No, you want to park that part I'm, right I'm, there. I'm, no, 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 right I'm, I'm, I'm serious. And I'm, okay. a, here, here's why. Because when, when, you, when you understand what your purpose really is, you have to be fed on a deeper level. And so, and I've often told women, it's like, your flesh can't really feed what I really have because I know the call on my life is great. Yeah, you fine. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? All, I mean, you, you know, you check off my boxes as to what I like. But at this point, like, it's about, pre it's not about preference, it's about purpose. Because there's a lot of people that are hooking up and getting together, and you have a lot of married people that are married, but they can't tell you why they're married because they don't understand the purpose because marriage is really based off of the purpose that God has for you and that Absolutely. individual to, yeah. uh, to carry out. You know what I'm saying? So to understand that I have to have somebody that meet my level as it pertains to me as a purpose, because now you, now let's, 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 I mean, because I, cause the truth is, man, like once y'all done doing y'all thing, man, it's, it, it's, it's, it's not satisfying right. if it's not right. It's well, just not. It, I, and, and I totally agree with that, you know, that it's bigger. But I know, because I've, I've heard some of your messages and I heard you mention, so, you know, I want to kind of talk about this, about you saying that basically the person that you marry, that you decide that you choose who, you, who you're going to be with, they have to already kind of know their purpose. Do you still feel that well, way? Well, I, I, well, here's the thing. I don't feel like they have to know their purpose, meaning that, and, he, and, he, and, and I want to clarify this. What, what, what your purpose is may not be the same as mine. And, and, I, and I will say this. I don't want somebody in the same field as me. I don't. And that's just but something I've already... Do they have to know what their purpose is, though? Like, do they just... I, well, I would say they have to know what their purpose is, but I will like for them to have an understanding of what they're called to do. And here's why. Because if you have thing, to understand, right? well, like, what, you, what you call to do may not be your purpose because that may be a part of your talent. It may, it may be a part of your talent. Okay. Because your gift is often where you're working in your purpose. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, most people don't get paid to work in their purpose. You know, so forget what social media telling you. A lot of people don't get paid to work in a purpose. A lot of people are getting paid for a talent. It's just like somebody who is talented in uh, uh, accounting. And you know they 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 just good with numbers, but mm -hmm. their purpose may be you know they 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 are uh, um, they are intercessory at the church, you know, <laughs> and that's their purpose is to intercede yeah. the pastor. And you don't get paid to be an intercessor, so meaning that you have an understanding that my 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 question is always that way. If you have an understanding of what it is that you're called to do, whether it's your gift, your talent, or your purpose, I can have an understanding on how I support you. Because we don't have to have the same purpose. We just have to meet and be in alignment with how we support each other. I think that okay. people have gotten misconstrued, That's good. meaning yeah. that just because I'm a teacher or a speaker, that I got to be with somebody. No, because I can, I can rest assure you, if you are the person that is pouring out to people, you need to have somebody that can match you on the level that you pour, that they can pour back into you. So it has to be a balancing act. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, it flip because if I can meet your need on the level of how God is using you on whatever platform that is, then you're able to meet a need on minds on a different level. Because oftentimes, and this, and this is why you'll see often a pastor who's out front, the wife is behind, or mm -hmm. if you see them both. It, for an example, if you look at Barack, right, and Michelle, and you mm -hmm. look at them, you look at how the roles switch. When he came out of office, she stepped forward, and guess what he did? He stepped behind. He did. As when he was out, when he was a president, he was out front. Mm -hmm. That's how purpose worked. Because now <laughs> she's going on tour. She's doing. She did over four million copies over her uh, 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 with her book sale. It's just understanding that we are in alignment with how we support each other. Our purpose doesn't have to look alike. We just create that balance that, hey, mm -hmm. right now, baby, it's your, it's your time. Go out there and run with it. That's right. our word, run with it. 
That's what God called you to do. How can I support you? You need me to set up the table. You need me to, you know what I'm saying? That's uh, good. Pull up the okay. Car. okay. And then, good. and then, and then here's what happened because that's what you call seasons. Marriage, relationship, they all operate in season. That's true. And now that the season has changed for Barack to step out, now you see more of Michelle. Yeah. So he's letting her run. And that's how it's supposed to be. The issue with us is that we see two dope people, right? You look good. You look good. I'm doing something great. I'm doing something great. Let's come together. And what happened is we're coming together to do great things, but we have no understanding of how our greatness get accomplished. Mm, that's good. Because every nobody wants to take the back seat. Right. And to right. understand the back seat, meaning that doesn't mean that you're – you're you're it you're any you're, less than yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. just means that in this season, Fallon, God has you running with this thing. Mm -hmm. And then maybe there's a season where God pulls you, and then the role switch. Right. But what's important is that the only way that you have an understanding of that it goes back to what you said, finding out who God says who you are in, in the Word. Right. That way, when God connects you with somebody who has a purpose. And that purpose may be he's the manager of Academy and he runs that thing well. Mm -hmm. And you support him whatever way he can. You know what I mean? Right. Or whatever the case may be. But it doesn't mean that just because you're not on a platform to speaking or teaching or writing books mm -hmm. that your purpose is any less than because purpose is always building people in no matter what capacity you're in. Right. Well, I'll, I'll say this. Like, so when I met my husband... I was a clinical neurophysiologist. I, I, I felt like I was in my purpose, you know, great job, great career, you know, things were good. I just was ready for that next thing. You know, like I was, you know, 31, I was ready to get married, ready to have kids, watch all my friends, all my sorority sisters, you know, doing this. So I'm like, okay, I'm ready for that life now. But I didn't necessarily know my purpose. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just was like, I know, I just feel like this is what, this is what you do. You go to college, you graduate, you get a great job, you take care of yourself. So I was doing that. But my husband was able to see that, see something in me. And many times the husband can come in and my husband was the person that really kind of like pushed me into my destiny. So you can get, you, you know, when you get guys best, he, he will be able to recognize there's something more in you. As my husband was having a conversation with me, he felt like there was a, there, he was like, you can be an entrepreneur. Like you have this, I didn't see it. And I was like, no, I'm gonna work my job and I'm gonna retire right here. And I told him during the dating, so he was not surprised when we got married, that I was not going to be anybody's entrepreneur. I'm going to be right here at this job, you know. But he just really poured into me, and he saw more, and he began to prophesy over me and speak over me. The things that I'm doing right now are the things that he spoke over me, you know, years ago that I did not see. So I think, too, it's just important to just really just be spirit-led when you're okay, deciding absolutely. on who you're going to um, get with and just let God get involved and, and make the match. Because he writes the best stories. He right. writes the best love stories. I, if you would have told me, you know, back when we first got married, that I would be the one, like, kind of taking over with the ministry. I used to be, just like, what, it was funny as I was listening to you, when we used to do our little shows and stuff, I was so shy. I didn't want to say anything. And it was, like, on the phone. Like, it was blog talk radio. So I was shy. I wouldn't say anything. He was like, baby, you want to come in? No, just go. You know, I just felt like I had nothing to add. But now that he's not here now, I've come to the forefront and people see me now speaking. I honestly think if he were to come back today, he would probably be just, he would be shocked to see me doing public speaking, stuff that I used to be terrified of, you know? So um, I think that just really the first thing is just being spirit led and um, knowing when God is telling you to, to be with that person and then just let him get involved and do whatever he needs to do to, to, to bring out the purpose in the marriage. Right. And then to, and to add to what you're saying, um, I'm uh, oftentimes I'm big on this. Like when I left football, I started a training business where I was working, training my buddies. I was training so many pro athletes, kids, basketball, football, white, black, Asian. I had all those kids mm -hmm. and I was thriving in it. That was my purpose. I often tell people purpose always evolves. It evolves. My purpose and your purpose, your purpose has always been where you're at. And it just evolved it to different yeah. levels. Yeah. It evolves yeah. to different levels. And this is why I say, you know, I always ask somebody, like, are you doing Are you doing what you like to do or are you doing what you love? And it's not a question to where I'm uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, as we call it in therapy, I'm not scanning. 
It's just really asking a, a, a valid question like, you know, where are you and what you're doing? And because many times, as you said, uh, like when we connect with the right people, they will see things about us that we never see right. because relationships are mirrors. And sometimes, those, mirror, sometimes those mirrors will often reflect things that we walk past. Because mm -hmm. how many times we walk past a mirror and we only see half of ourselves and we don't stand and look at the full picture. And sometimes when you're in a relationship, it reveals the full picture of who you are. And oftentimes who you are has, not, has yet to be revealed because certain parts of you have yet to be watered and it has yet to be cultivated. That's and so... Marriage is the biggest character builder. Like, absolutely. I don't, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's a whole other conversation for yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, and, and I always yeah. tell people, and I had all of these kids, I had over 150 kids in my program. God came to me one day after five years, and he said, shut this part of your business down and start sharing your story. And people would say, man, why are you walking away from training? You were so great at it. Once again, training was a talent. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could do it with my eyes closed. Like, That's I can look at an athlete and tell him, you're going to pull your hamstring the way you, by the way you walk. Your hips are, your hips are swaying. They're mm -hmm. tight. I can tell your IT bands. I can tell, you know what I'm saying, you, you're, you're having knee problems. It was, a, it was a great talent. And that talent was cultivated by a professor mm -hmm. who saw me in college. And so he was like, yo, man, whenever you're done playing ball, I think you'll be a hell of a trainer. But then my purpose has always been building young people. That's and God, God evolved it because it went from training kids physically to training them mentally. Then it went to writing books. Then it went to developing programs and speaking and so on and so forth. And I tell you, that's good. That's really good. If, if you pay attention to David's journey, if you pay attention to Joseph's journey, there was evolution always in the purpose. Notice what David was doing. He was watching sheep. He was mm -hmm. a sheep herder. What did he do? When you're ruling people, what do you do? You're watching them. Yeah. You're yeah. protecting them. So you're all, I feel, I feel this is me. Does, you know, don't quote mm -hmm. me on this. I feel that in some capacity, in some shape or form, we are always in our purpose. And I think I agree. if we open. I agree a thousand percent. Yeah. And I think if we, if we allow God to evolve us in it, we see those different dimensions of how we can operate and function in our purpose. True. But then again, it's a choice because it's free will. That's right. And because you will have people who will leave purpose and run back to the talent because the talent pays and purpose don't. That's right. So, yeah. you know what yeah, I mean? That's it's good. A, you know, and that's a whole nother conversation. I can teach <laughs> about that because I, I, I've been there. Right. You know, so I, I think, you know, overall, I mean, I, I love your ministry and, and really you. what you're standing for and what you're really, you know, because, you know, I, I wrote this girl's book, Letters to a Young Queen, and this is not a book plug, people, but it's an amazing book. But, and I say it because I get so many messages from young girls mm -hmm. who feel like, oh, Jesus, uh, they, they feel like they got to give up something. Mm -hmm. in order to get love. And oftentimes I'm telling them, sweetheart, it doesn't exist. Love is not in sex. Sex is an affirmation. It's not love. It's an act. So anytime that you give in hopes of anticipating that he's going to give you love, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And now you're left with these holes. Mm -hmm. that you're wanting to feel with other things.